when SOLIDWORKS loads. If you guys want to go ahead and open up the wizard uh, for simulation after you have your caps on, then that's a good idea. You want to use water and gravity. Everything else is basically default. And there's lots of options in there. I'll run through those as soon as I got SOLIDWORKS running. Not all of them, but some of them. Yeah, you can call whatever you want. I'm recording, I'm screen sharing. We're good there. Open up the pipes. Open the pipes. Yeah, all my add-ins are back to my default, so I'm gonna have to reload my add-ins. I'm gonna try turning off my other ones before I turn on flow simulation. Maybe that'll work better. I remember one of the biggest advantages of SOLIDWORKS um, when it was first kind of gaining in popularity was that almost all the integration of all the different packages for doing different types of simulation and stuff um, was like the big selling point, right? Like you could do simulation and stuff inside SOLIDWORKS. You didn't have to go to an exterior tool to do drawings and assemblies and all that other stuff. Now I feel like that's like the default for pretty much everything. And SOLIDWORKS is kind of flopped where it has all of these add-ins where like you have to enable them and disable them. It's interesting. I think probably if we move to 3D experience, like the online version of SOLIDWORKS, it'd be a little bit more seamless. All right, so I want to do tools, lids. Hopefully you already did that. I'll wait for my tool to load. I'm gonna select the planar face on the end of this. It's gonna automatically recognize where to put the lid. I don't really want it to be thicker than it needs to be, so I'm only gonna make it 0.1 inches thick. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I could probably do that in one operation. I didn't check. Yeah, you can just click on both of them, yeah. All right, so now I've got that closed volume and we have to have that closed volume for the simulation to run properly. It is gonna look for a void inside of our part to run the analysis. I'm gonna start by using the wizard to define the settings for the uh, simulation. I don't really care what it's called. Let's call it like one pipe. Again, you can call these whatever you want. Configuration, again, if you have default configurations you wanna use because you're doing the same kind of simulation multiple times, it's good to save that out. If you don't know what you're gonna doing, you're just gonna start with the default and then add, customize it as you go through. Um, I like using SI, SI works pretty good. The only thing that's not great for SI is mass flow rate because you get it in meters cubed per second, right? which meters cubed per second is a huge flow. Um, but other than that, the rest of the units are good. So I'm gonna say an SI. Um, I do wanna have gravity on. Having things without gravity is oftentimes confusing. We do wanna make sure our gravity is going in the right direction. In this case, I have it going in the Z direction. Um, I want my up to be in the Y. So I'm just gonna change this. So it's in a negative 9.81 in the Y direction. Um, so gravity, pretty straightforward. Just make sure it's going in the correct direction relative to your simulation. It shows that error there, arrow there. Um, if you don't do that, then your gravity just won't make any sense, right? I like doing that for any flows that have any kind of vertical displacement. If you don't have vertical displacement in your flow pattern or the vertical displacement is not enough for gravity to make a difference in pressure, then don't bother, right? And then we hit next. And say, what kind of fluids do you want to use? I want to use a liquid. I want to use liquid water. That's all I care about. Um, I'm not going to bother trying to calculate cavitation. That's just a different option you can have. If you're worried about cavitation, then you can check that. If you're not worried about cavitation, you can leave it unchecked. Um, if you want to look at just laminar or just turbulent flow, because you know the flow is going to be one of those things, then you can just click that. If you don't click it, it'll run the calculation and it'll say, uh, based off a of Reynolds number for velocity at this area, I think it's turbulent, I think it's laminar, and then it'll pick for you automatically. Does that make sense? 
So if you don't know, use both. If you know which one it's going to be, then use the one you want it to be. Or if you want to force a condition just because it's a theoretical thing, then go ahead and do that. Any questions on that? Um, SOLIDWORKS doesn't do a great job with compressible fluids, um, with gases, but it'll work. It's just not like the best. I don't really care about thermal conditions here. This is what I was talking about, why you have to have like those wall thicknesses. Um, but again, I'm not really looking for doing a thermal analysis on top of the flow analysis. Like most things in SOLIDWORKS, I can stack like stress and flow and thermal together and then communicate between those different results. Um, but again, I'm not going to do that because we're not going to get that level of complexity. So I'm just going to hit next. It's going to review all the different things we have defined, right? Say, yeah, we want all that stuff. Great. What's your default atmospheric pressure? All that kind of stuff to go with. I'm going to say finish. So not a big deal. This box here, that's the bounding box. It's basically the volume in XYZ coordinates that it's going to run the calculations for. And then we got to decide how do we want the flow to kind of go into and out of this system to make it easier for me to select interior faces inside this volume. I'm going to use the section tool and I'm just going to look at half of this part, the basically for this entire analysis. So I'm, I'm never going to leave this section view from this point forward. All right. Questions on that or any other things so far? Yeah, Krishana. Yep, just water. And then I use the default. Wait, why do you have a missile picture? Default fluid type. Why do you have? Try doing remove. Like on that and remove. You going to project fluid default fluid? Let me check my settings. I'm not sure how you got that. Uh, I need project settings. Uh, no. General settings. Uh, fluids. I don't know how you got that. Did you accidentally like, click something here? Fluid default fluid. <laughs> All right, so we're good. Uh, I need to specify my boundary constraints. We may only get to do one actual run through this. I'll try to make a video showing some more variations on here. Boundary conditions, again, probably the most important part about this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to specify an input flow rate, and then on the exit, I'm going to specify it's exiting at atmospheric pressure. Does that make sense? So I'm going to insert a boundary condition. Here's the different options for the types of boundary conditions you can have. You can have a flow opening, a pressure opening, or you can have a wall, basically a limitation point, right? Also, the walls are default the parts. So usually you don't need to add walls unless you're doing some kind of simulation thing. So I wanna have a inlet volume flow at the base of the long portion of my pipe. And I mentioned what I said before that medium, uh, meters cube per second is a really big number. So I'm gonna use a hundredth of a meter cube per second, which is about 200 gallons per minute, right? It's a lot of water. Does that make sense? I clicked on this blue one right here, which is at the end of the long pipe, right? The bottom of my thing. Does that make sense? Questions, concerns, comments? Okay, 
Click on OK. Right click on the boundary conditions again, insert another boundary condition. And then this time I'm going to use a, uh, we call it a pressure opening. I'm going to go to the opposite end of my pipe. And I want the pressure at this phase to be environmental. So it's going to go to my default pressure. No, it's the inside face, always the inside face. Again, we want, we need the faces we're selecting to touch the void in the middle of our part. If you do something else, it's never going to reach that point, right? So if I click on the outside face, this will not work. I need to make sure I'm getting the inside face, which is why I'm staying in this section view. You hear what I'm saying, Krishana? Hit cancel. Go to the section view. Right here, top middle of the screen. And make sure you're selecting the inside faces. Again, if I don't get those inside faces, this is not going to work. And then what I really want to know is I'm going to be adding some more um, pipes to this to rerun this analysis. And really what I know is how much food is coming out of each pipe, right? But to make sure that our simulation is set up and working, I'm just going to make sure, like do an interior consistency check. Does my outflow match my inflow for this current situation? So I'm gonna do a goal, right? And I want a surface goal. The goal is basically, what are you trying to calculate as part of this simulation? It's gonna calculate a bunch of stuff, right? But what numbers do you really want? So I'm gonna do a surface goal of mass flow rate. You guys see mass flow rate right there? Or sorry, no, volume flow rate. I want volume flow rate. I can get both, but I want volume because I defined my input as volume flow. And since this is supposed to be a logic check, right on that face that I selected for the outside, right? So that's gonna measure all of the volume of fluid going across that surface as part of the simulation and then give me a number output. Questions on that? Does that make sense? All right, so a quick review. I've got an input volume flow of 0.1 meters per second, which my calculated output flow should be equal to that. If it's not, something's wrong. My output is just environmental pressure so I'm flowing, I'm forcing water through this pipe and it's just coming out the outside. Just look like this was a sprinkler system or something, right? I'm calculating the volumetric flow and I've got all my settings set up with water and gravity and stuff, right? So I'm gonna run this. It's gonna say, what do you wanna do? You wanna mesh and solve, right? I'm doing new calculations. Do you wanna look at the results? Yes, I wanna look at the results, right? You can say, you can put remote stuff. If you wanna offload some of the computation here, you can. But I'm just going to run this. It's going to take a few seconds for it to run. We're doing simple simulations also because this does take computational time, right? Uh, I think I'm going to say cancel because I don't have the base capacity to allow access. So I'm just hoping that's fine. I didn't get that error when I ran it on my personal computer. So hopefully that's not a problem. <laughs> that's your inlet. It should be a volume flow. Right? That's not your goal. You want the outlet to change. In other words, you want to check the volume. All right, so I'm done. I want to be able to see my results. So I have my results down here. I have my goal plots. I'm going to insert a goal plot. You guys all see that? Hopefully I'm still recording this. So if you don't, I can go in here. Wait for that to load. Uh, we're gonna use it just to show it, but you can export to an Excel file, right? So I'm just gonna say, there's the one, I have one goal, right? I'm just gonna click on show. And it's gonna show me, oh, I'm gonna right click on that and I'll just show again. There is the volume of throw rate. This is actually a function of the simulation iteration. So you can see there was a little bit of an error right at the start, but then for all the other iterations, the flow had stabilized. And so it was calculated correctly. Does that make sense? So what I put in input flow of 0 0.01, right? The flow outwards was 0 0.01. 
and it's negative because it's flow leaving the system, right? So there was a flow rate of 0 0.01 leaving the system. Does that make sense? It, our inputs minus our output. That's all we care about right now. Logic check, flow is working. You usually want to start with something like that, where you know that, okay, I set up all my systems, I ran it, it works, I don't have anything weird going on, right? Um, I want to show you guys some of the tools you can to visualize these things. All of these things right here are helping you to visualize the flow. Um, I'm going to start with the flow directory. So I'm going to insert. So you can right click on flow directory, insert. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually calculate this on a surface that's the same as my cut plane here. So I'm going to go to my, uh, my front plane, right? And what I'm going to calculate, I like to use the regular arrows. The flat arrows are just their planar. The regular arrows are like round, right? They're volumetric arrows. Um, I'm going to calculate the uh, flow rate, uh, the velocity of the flow. I'm just going to go to velocity. If you guys want to, you can change like the size of the arrows and the spacing and all that junk right there, right? And there's sliders for all that. But I'm doing the front plane, right? With arrows for velocity. I'm going to click on the green check mark. And it's going to go into my results and it's going to plot the velocity of the flow on my part, right? You see all there's? So you see like the velocity coming in the inlet, pretty, pretty constant. It's actually a little bit faster in the middle than it is on the outside, but this is a big pipe, right? Then when we get to the outlet, there's a little bit of a choke here. The velocity has to turn that corner. So it really squishes up against that far wall and speeds up. And then because it is no longer evenly distributed, it's obviously much lower at the wall than it is there. And one of the other things that's cool about this is I can animate these. So if you right click on your flow directories, so you can hit play and it shows you like a little wee visualization of the flow. And you can see that the faster arrows actually move faster. The slower arrows actually move slower. Again, this is all relative. Um, eight meters per second is not super fast, but it's fast enough, right? Like it would shoot up into the air a little bit, right? And we can see that because this pipe is so big, we're actually not using the whole kind of diameter of what we have here. Uh, there's options you can pick out to have it tell you turbulent and laminar. I don't think it will give you that um, by default. I think it calculates, should it be turbulent or laminar and then just runs, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. It says like, you know, basically figures it out based off what you spent as inputs and outputs and then picks one and uses it, right? And again, this is not gonna be perfectly accurate. There's gonna be issues here, right? Um, and probably this flow wouldn't be exactly like this. This is a little too nice of a curve for what I have at this sharp elbow, but it works, right? Questions on that? You can also use isosurfaces and surface plots if you wanna look at like a specific cross section, right? In more detail and get an actual plot of what is the velocity as a cross section at this location, um, all that good stuff, all right? Now what I wanna do is I wanna go back into my part and I wanna to go to the many pipes configuration and we're gonna to have to close off our um, our parts. I'm going to unsuppress the two lids that I already added. And then we go into tools, create lids, and I'll add lids to the remaining pipes. All right, and I'll make those all the same thickness. So now I've got lids at all those. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna go back to my flow. Uh, I minimize, I hear my flow simulation. So I'm just gonna go back and forth between these two. This one doesn't have an activated project. Um, I probably could try and load in my previous one, but I'm just gonna make a new one because then I have all these new configurations. So it's gonna be largely the same thing. I'm gonna go into the wizard. I'm going to make sure I have my unit set. I'm going to make sure I'm doing internal, right? And I'm going to use gravity, negative 9.81. I don't know if there's like enough height here for this gravity to make any difference. Probably not, but 
I just worry about not having gravity and getting weird results. Because a lot of times things will behave not the way you expect them to without gravity. In the same exact settings as last time. I'm going to use the same basic settings as last time. I'm going to define a new boundary condition. I'm going to use a volumetric flow rate. I'm going to use my section view. Actually, I got to exit the boundary condition, turn on the section view, then go back into it because it won't let me turn the section view on while I'm adding the boundary condition. I'll use the same volumetric throw 0 0.01 meters per second as my inlet. And then I'm going to do uh, boundary conditions at each of my outlets, make them all uh, atmospheric pressure, right? So environmental pressure. And I think I can do this for all the faces at the same time. I'm just kind of zooming in, zooming out, scrolling. Is there a question, Kira? No. I'm just readjusting. Yeah, so there we go. So I got my environmental pressure on all five outlets. I've got my volume inflow. And I do want to have a measure of how much outflow do I have at each of these conditions, right? So this one here, the previous one was kind of like a no duh, right? Inlet equals outlet. In this case, I'm actually going to be able to see, you know, what's happening inside this system. Um, it might be a little bit unintuitive because the velocity is all going down this pipe, and so you know you're not going to you're going to have a big pressure change at that elbow. So I don't expect to see like a whole necessarily all of it coming out the first one if these were all smooth transitions. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to use volumetric flow rate. Nope, not cat area. For each of these ones, I do want these to be separate goals. So I'm going to do them one at a time. I'm not sure what it does if you try and give it multiple surfaces. I guess I can check. It lets you do it, but I don't, I don't trust it. I want my goals to be separate goals. And I am going to try and do them in order. So I have the first one here, second one. Maybe I'll do the last two as one feature just to see what happens. So you made them all right? Yeah, I'm doing one, two, three. Oh, I put them in the wrong spot. I'll do the last two as one just to see what happens. I think what it's going to do if I put them together is it'll calculate the total volume metric through through both faces rather than the volume metric throw through each individual face, um, which I don't want, right? I want the flow coming out of each pipe. But I'll do the last two together just to see what it looks like. Why not? Learning opportunity, right? All right, got my inlets, I got my outlet conditions, I've got my goals to measure with. I'm gonna run this, and this will be the last thing we do because now you guys gotta get over to class. And I can see uh, basically how much water is coming out of each of these pipes as a function of this setup. If I were to change pipe geometry, right, you can see how that changed the outlet. And the next thing we were hoping to do, which we probably would have had time to get to if we didn't have a blue screen problem, um, was adding those restrictors on the end and then showing that that significantly changes the distribution of flow coming out of each of the pipes. So my expectation is that the flow is going to be very different coming out of the pipes in this one because, again, this is a large flow rate that's not very well restricted, right? Um, vortex crosses the boundary, no warnings. So if you have like turbulent flow at the exit and like it's spinning, that can cause an accumulation of air. And so a lot of times it gives you a warning if you have any turbulent flow there. Now, if the turbulent flow velocity at the outlet is not very high, um, then the mean doesn't change very much. And so it's not a big deal, but it gives you a warning saying like, hey, your volume flow calculation might not be accurate because you have inlet and outlet, right, as a result of turbulence at that interface. Just, just so you guys know. If you have that case, then you may get weird numbers, um, especially if it's very turbulent at the exit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And you can always go and force laminar, and then that'll fix that. But then if you have turbulent flow in your pipe and you force laminar at the exit, then you know that's not going to give you accurate results either. So. Okay. It visualizes the turbulence. Yeah, it'll show you 
the like eddies and stuff. Yeah. Your calculation ran faster than mine. I started. Ah, you were quicker. <laughs> <laughs> did you put in the new uh, velocity plot too? Uh, no, I didn't do that. I, I just, I, the first thing I did was I, I did the, the trajectory as velocity. Yeah. Yeah, you do the goal plot. So you can put in a goal plot for each of the goals and it should show you what the flow outlet for each of those was. You gotta define it and then, I usually define it and then show it, but you can just show it um, and just see what they are. So all is finished, huzzah. All right, so I'm gonna go to my results. I'm gonna go to my goal plots, insert. Let's do all. That's not surprising to me because again, it's going straight down. All the ones before that, you know, you you can imagine if you have velocity going through a pipe, and then you have a T there, right? Without a flow restriction, there's no reason for the flow to divert and change direction, right? So it's not until you get to the end that you have something forcing it to change direction that you're having most of your velocity come out. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna click OK. And then I'm going to go to my show my goal, goal plots. Uh, this is for one. I want to see all four. Maybe I have to do them separate. Looks like it. So that's one. So he's got very little flow coming out of it. There's two, it's got a little bit more. Again, it's stabilizing at a relatively low flow rate. Um, I'm gonna show four. Yeah, and like I said before, it looks like it's showing me, oh, that's not what I want, just show. Do I already have it shown? Maybe I can't show more than two? Oh, it's leading the whole thing. Oh, there's hide. Hide? I'm hiding, but it's not hiding it. Oh, I'm on the wrong spot. Durr. Right. Yes, yeah, so that one's, again, stabilizing down at what we expected to do. And if we look at our uh, ISO flow trajectories, use the same thing as before, our velocity. Uh, I'm still not sure why my height option is not hiding those. We can see the flows through there, right? And again, our velocities here through these pipes are all very small because again, we're not, the flow is going straight through, right? Nothing's restricting it. So if we add our restrictions, then we start to see equalization of flow through the different pipes. You guys have ever had a broken sprinkler head or a missing sprinkler head? What happens? All the flow comes out that one piece, right? And then your other sprinklers do nothing because that's the non-restricted flow, right? When you add the sprinkler heads back in, then all the sprinkler heads should have about the same, or whatever the rated flow rate is, because um, they should have about 32 feet of pressure on them. Anyways, good luck on transport. Do you want a screenshot or anything? For this? I do want a screenshot. There's a screenshot assignment for you guys to submit. You can just take a picture of any flow result that you have and upload that. Um, I'll try and record a separate video showing some more of this stuff. So you guys can kind of see some more results. And so you can go back to that if you want to. Um, not super unintuitive to use, but again, does require defining boundary constraints that make sense and being fairly careful as to how you set it up.